Hello. In this video, I'm going to describe how the course is evaluated and also how you should interpret the optional points in the progress bar. This is the progress bar which appears in the edX platform. The first thing you should know about the activities in this course is that there are five types of exercises or groups of exercises that we are going to do over the course. The first is this one here, which refers to self-assessment. There are three exercises in this group related to this category, and then the average of your marks for these exercises. Next to that, you can see a wide column, this one that I'm pointing to, with tasks related to the model of innovation, how it can be defined, its components, that sort of thing. There are many exercises, but you can see that some of them are tagged with an X at the top, these that I'm pointing at. The X means that these exercises are optional. So it's possible to score 100% of the average mark for this group of exercises simply by doing the first seven. If you don't achieve the top score in some of the first seven, then you can do some of the extra exercises. And if you get higher grades in these, they will substitute the original ones. This way, as these extra exercises haven't been done yet, uh, you can see this X down here. If you try one of them and get, let's say, 30% and you have the seven original exercises with a higher grade, you will still see an X at the top of the 30% bar because it is worth less than other exercises which are included in the average mark. And it's an X because it is worth less than other exercises. Next, you have the group of exercises related to the assessment of other people, while the last two groups of exercises are concerned with the action plan and with, and with reflecting and noting down your thoughts that you will do at the beginning and at the end of the course. Additionally, if you pass the cursor over each of the bar charts, you'll be shown which exercises is being rated and how many points the exercise is worth as a percentage of the maximum score that can be obtained. You can see the same information at the bottom here, broken down into the type of activity, whether it carries points or not, how many, how many points, and if you have completed the activity, the score you obtained. It's not difficult to understand in order to see your progress. In this example, the completed exercise was given 5 points out of 10. And in the other one, you can see that the score was 100%. At this point, you may already have some questions, and I'm going to anticipate that they are similar to the questions students usually ask and, and try to give you the answers. The first question is, why do we have so many exercises? Well, the main goal we are pursuing with all this is to reinforce your learning through repeatedly applying the knowledge you get from the course. But to avoid repeating the same thing, which would be boring, we've created a wide and diverse variety of tasks, and so you have self-diagnosis, self-reflection, you have exercises where you need to classify or categorize, and you also have exercises that allow you to see the answers given by your colleagues, so that you can compare your points of view with those of the other participants in the course. We're confident that as you read and use the different definitions or descriptions of behaviours related to innovation competence, it will become easier to assimilate and understand them. The second thing you may be wondering is whether there is any benefit in doing more exercises. And the answer is yes. There are a couple of sections where you have optional exercises. For example, in the section called Model of Innovation Competence, you have a series of optional exercises that can help you to improve your global score for the course. Or you can do them simply as extra practice, as a means of applying and experimenting with what you're learning. Practice makes perfect. So you can take profit of this extra practice. There are also some open answer tasks where you will need to rate your colleagues using a rubric which will give you. You will need to do this at least twice as a minimum. But you can do more. And it's useful to do so, because these exercises allow you to see the comments and responses of your classmates. This way you are able to see other people's approach to the activities. So, I think that now you should be able to interpret the progress bar in edX and understand why we ask you to do the exercises we do, and how they contribute to reinforcing your learning.